So before we take this Kurzweil apart, I thought we'd go full ESD protection. I've got this mat for Maplins. It comes with this cable which plugs into the mat. Um, we have a crocodile clip on this side. The crocodile clip comes off. Um, and we have two more banana connections here. This is a connector for the mat. I just untangle this and push that on. And here we have the wristband, which again this crocodile clip can come off. And then we can plug this into one of the two banana sockets in here. And I'm going to use this clip type probe to actually connect to the chassis of the Kurzweil. And that plugs into this connection here also. My DC power supply conveniently has a nice earthing connection on here so we can connect the mat to that. Uh, this connector is not going to be chunky enough to really take a good grip on the chassis so um, I'm going to use a bit bigger one instead. So we'll plug that into the mat and connect that to the chassis and now we should be pretty safe for ESD. So I don't make any mistakes on putting this thing back together. I'm going to mark all the ribbon cables um, in different colour pens and mark on the connector side uh, which side the stripe is. This is quite a long cable. I'll just tuck this out the way here for the moment. Ok, we'll just take out the old analog I.O. board. I've already removed the sockets on the back and just left the two each end. There's a little power cable here I need to unplug. And to be on the safe side, I'm just going to put every board I take out into an anti-static bag. I've got about four songs currently I'm working on with this Kurtzwell, so... I do not want to take any risks. Okay, we'll just turn this round. And we'll carry on taking these IDC cables out and clearly writing numbers on each cable as to where they go. OK, that's all the IDC out. Now we have these power cables left. Again, I'm going to mark on them. This. You can't really put these on around the wrong way, but still. <coughs> Better safe than sorry. And there's a couple of other connections to the board here. In order to slide this motherboard out, we're going to have to take this fan off. Um, just find a box nut I can use to take these nuts off. Um, it's a perfect time now to really give it a good clean out as well.
Okay, that's the fan out of here. Pretty uh, yucky, as you can see. We'll give that a good clean in a bit. Next, we can undo the screws which hold the digital board down. And here we have the digital board, processor, RAM, the PRAM is on there. And we're going to put this into a big anti-static bag as well. This is the most dangerous bit to be fiddling around with. And here we have the analog board at the bottom with all the DACs, the Digitech FX processor and the power supply. These are the caps we're going to need to replace. We've got the voltage regulators along there. Nice linear power supply. A couple more caps I'm going to change over down there as well. There's a couple more connectors we need to take off this board here. And they're different sizes so we can't get that wrong. And this connector is the one we took off the analog board. You can see it is bod soldered onto a couple of those voltage regulators there. Anyway, this is the battery connector. And so after 20 years of studio use, you can see there's a fair amount of gunk being pulled into the machine. And I also found this screw rattling around in there. Um, that was a lucky we found that. Uh, this digital I.O. board is in the way so we can't sli slide the motherboard out yet. We we'll have to take this off. Okay, there's the analog board that we need to work on. I'll just disconnect this earth cable and see if I can move this chassis out of the way. Okay, she's free. I don't know if you can see the dust that's just blown off that, so um, 
I think I'm going to have to take this outside and give it a good blast with the um, pressurised air can. Okay, that's much cleaner now. Look at that. So what I'm going to do is make a little map um, showing which caps go where. And start by taking out the first cap. I'm going to add a little bit of flux just to help the solder try and flow into the braid that I'm going to use. I use quite a big tip to make sure I can get a lot of heat transfer. Okay, that came out quite cleanly. Just give it a little bit of a tidy up. So now I can write down the values of this cap in its proper place on the map. Um, I think I'd rather take them all out first, um, clean up the board, and then install the new ones.
Okay, that went really well. Now I can put in my nice new Nichicon UPW capacitors. Okay, now they're all in. I'm just going to give the board a good clean with some isopropyl alcohol just to remove all the flux from the solder. Okay, now we can try and reassemble this thing. Just slide the analog board in first. And now for the moment of truth. Just checking the SD card. And we're in like Flynn. Yeah, everything looks tickety boo. So, a couple of years ago, I did replace the EL panel on this um, screen, um, but now I thought I'd go for something a bit more high contrasty with this replacement one I bought off eBay. And this is telling you how to set the contrast. The eBay user I bought this off was called Music Electronic. Um, I'll leave a link below in case anybody wants to replace their tired screen. It's a little preset pot. So we're going to have to take off this whole front panel in order to get to the screen. Yeah, 
Here we can see the original screen. Just four screws holding it in place. I really need to make a good front panel for this breakout for this SD card. Need to find one that mounts onto a panel. At some point I'll get around to that. Okay, we'll just thread this new ribbon cable through the hole. I'm going to do a hard reset now, as we've been unplugging boards. Have a quick look, see how we can adjust the contrast here. I think that looks good. And ta-da! Look at that. That's incredible. So I'm just going to put a little bit of heat shrink around this preset pot just to make sure it doesn't get in the way. I'm going to shorten out on anything. Mm -hmm. 